Hello Capricorn, it's with a reading for anyone who really resonates with the sign of Capricorn, whether you um, have Capricorn in your sun or in the moon sign or in rising or Venus or or um, if you just resonate with Capricorn in some way, this reading could um, fit for you. Um, this re reading is going to be focused on love. Um, so we'll see what kind of story comes forward for you. Um, just to be really honest, Capricorn, this week's readings that have focused in on love, the messages have been very diverse. Um, so I'm just going to sit back now. I've learned to kind of sit back and just let, let the information flow. So whatever comes forward here, I am intending it to reach into the energy of love. Um, and I do know that spirit will work with us with that. Um, but there is also, um, um, a little bit of a lack of control that I have with the message that comes through. And I'm okay with that because that is what we do this work. That's why we do this work to bring information and messages through. All right. With that, um, please remember that everybody is moving a little bit differently. Everybody has different kinds of experiences. Um, everyone lives around the world in different kinds of cultures. So we could be moving at different paces. So um, you could be resonating with this current energy or you could be coming into this current energy or you could be saying, you know what, I, I just got done with that energy. I just got done with that situation. So every one of you could um, really, st your starting point here could be at a different place. So let's go ahead and look at the current energy now that's coming forward from this group, this mass consciousness, consciousness that I'm reaching into to see what we can find here for you. Current energy, current situation for Capricorn, current situation for Capricorn. Focused in on love now, focused in on love. Current energy for Capricorn, focused in on love. All right, my friends, we start off with the energy of the Four of Swords next to the Three of Pentacles. Then we have the King of Swords and then the Two of Wands. So as we kind of dig down into this energy of the Four of Swords, we, we do have a quieting, an energy of quiet, an energy of um, healing from something with the Four of Swords. Um, it, it, there could be a calmness about you. There could be a willingness now to kind of settle into to something and accept something with the four of swords remember the four of swords we always say that's coming in from the battle and what was the battle was the three of swords so there's something that you were experiencing um some most of you here because you're coming in from some type of battle and resting um you have been experiencing something that was quite traumatic for you it could have caused anxiousness it could have caused heartbreak um, and so you're coming in from that battle now and you're resting and each one of you are going to rest differently. That's something that I think that is a good reminder that we all rest differently. We all find peace in different ways. We all find enlightenment in different ways. We all connect to the higher power in different ways, whatever we consider that to be in our lives. And we all can connect in, in with it in different ways. We all have different religious religions, different belief systems. Even if we are in within a belief system that is similar to another person, we still believe something different usually than, you know, usually our belief systems don't fall right in line with the next person. Usually there's something that we have gone through in our life or that we've experienced in our life that is different than the next person. And it does color our belief systems. It colors um, the way we think about the, the higher power or the greater source energy. Um, so, so we have to remember with the four swords, we all are resting differently. We're all finding enlightenment differently. We're all coming in out of the battle differently because all of our battles were different, right? So, as we look into this consciousness, this group of energies of the Capricorn, we do feel that each and every one of your energies are different in, in some kind of way, but there is a similarity to the energy. There is a cohesiveness to how these energies come together as well. That's how we can build this story. Um, so this is a group of people who are coming in now from some sort of trauma 
and really settling into a resting energy, a still energy. And it is a, an energy that will bring revitalization. It will help to bring a connection to what gives you strength and, and, and helps you move into the next part of your journey. And um, we do have the three of pentacles here as well. So this is an energy now of, of really kind of, um, as you move forward or, or as you are in a resting position, you could be working on something now. Um, you could be focused on something that is um, somewhat new in your life. Now, when I mean new, I don't mean that it's brand new. I don't have a fool here. I have a three of pentacles. So it's something that has been started. Um, it is something that you can touch and feel. It's something in your reality that has already been started in some way, whether it's something that you're connecting into or whether it's something you've done for yourself. There is a focus now on something that um, is, is going to be an improvement in your life, but it's something that has just started because it's a three and you know that we go to the number 10. Now, this is something that you feel could really bring you or you could even see that is bringing you um, some improvement in your life. And I, and it looks like you feel like, um, it can really be something quite abundant as you set forward into this. So I think, um, really for this group of Capricorns, you're starting to work on something new. It's either it's new to you or, um, you have created it, but it's something that you can already touch and hold. It could be creative. You could be working on it with a few other people. Um, but it's something that you really are excited about. You are very optimistic about, and you really do see, uh, um, a trajectory here of success um, because it is a pinnacle and you are in the three energy. Um, you, you're, you're starting to see the bigger picture now as we move into the King of Swords. You're starting to see the bigger picture now in this puzzle of life, right? In this puzzle of life, in this puzzle of the now moment, what's going on now in your life. You're starting to see the bigger picture of it. You're putting the pieces together. You're gathering the information. You're digging deep within the self. And I'm really starting to see the bigger picture of, of, of what makes you you or what makes your environment you or what brings the three of pentacles to you. You're starting to put the pieces together and it's starting to feel more comfortable to you so that you can begin to make a decision because we do have a decision that's coming in. So you're really starting to um, see the bigger picture of this situation and uh, I think that brings a level of peace to you a level of empowerment to you because what can really keep us in um, a confused state is not really having clarity um, so it can be just constant confusion or a fogginess or just not being able to find the answers that you need to really feel comfortable where you are so there is an uh, information gathering um, that you've been doing and now that this this puzzle kind of comes together where you can see, okay, now I can see what's going on in my life. Now I can see why I feel this way, or now I can see why I have an urge to do something else, or, I, or now I can see why I'm being pulled to this tree of pentacles. Now I can see, right? Because the king of swords says, now I see, I see, you know, it's a phrase that is in any way in the U S we say, okay, I see that doesn't merely mean you see with your eyes, but you can, it means that you see with your mind, right? It's like the mind's eye you see. I see, I see. It's a phrase that when you, your brain starts to click with something, you, you say, I see. So I think you're seeing now, um, some, some, some clarity in your life and it's helping you to make this decision on which way you'd like to go, how you would like to do this, the strategy of it, the game plan of it. I always say it's almost like with the two of wands, having two business plans, creating two business plans and saying, okay, which business plan would be the most effective? Which business plan would bring, be the most abundant? Which business plan would bring me the most fulfillment, the most emotional joy in my life? Um, and, and now that the King of Swords is here, I feel like as you're moving forward, you will be able to make a, um, a decision, a careful decision, because the King of Swords makes very careful decisions. Sometimes he can take a little while as he kind of formulates the bigger picture. So you could be in this energy for a week or two or even two weeks here with the King of Swords, really trying to um, see the bigger picture. Now, the King of Swords... Um, it's an, it's an energy of seeing the bigger picture and how do you see it? Well, you can force it, but lots of times you really can't force it. You really, it is, um, what your guidance system can help bring to you and how you can really start to understand. So it's not just the mind working, but the heart working, the soul talking to the heart. It's really this four of swords that allows the king of swords. Um, uh, the four of swords here is the key. 
resting and revitalization, connecting in with uh, the higher power that you find um, strength in. Doing the Four of Swords, taking the action of the Four of Swords will help the King of Swords calm down, lessen the intensity of trying to figure this out. And then slowly this pe these pieces of information will be will be enlightened or will the, the light will be shown upon them so that you can see different puzzle. Oh, there's a puzzle piece under the bed or, or there's a puzzle piece under the dresser. There it is. Now I know, you know, it's, it's kind of, and, and sometimes when we're searching for something, um, we, we can't find it when we're searching intensely for it. We have to give it some time. We have to distract ourselves. And then all of a sudden we find the puzzle piece somewhere where we, we we never thought it would be maybe mixed in with some clothes or maybe it's underneath a piece of furniture or maybe we even put it in the refrigerator for some reason i've done that before good goodness you know like how would have i ever found it in the refrigerator you know so sometimes you know our the truth and the pieces to our puzzles can be found in in many different places and sometimes it really takes us for swords this relaxation to begin to to allow the truth to come towards us nevertheless you do have a two of wands here as you move forward so there's a strategy decision um it's an action decision it's a game plan decision um so let me dig into this two of wands just a little bit and see what what we can find let me look at both scenarios here so let's look at the first scenario and now we're getting um, much more detailed about the two of wands um and so i would just want to say like the, you might not resonate with everything here but i think it is helpful for people to see the two different sides and remember this is a general energy so um, let's look at side number one here option number one and you might have more options than just two you might have three or four different options so just saying this is this is the best i can do here and hopefully it will help you so we're looking at scenario one here. All right, so scenario one, you have a complete change. So there's a complete change here with the death energy. It's a Scorpio energy. It could, it could be something that um, you could feel quite emotional. It could be an emotional decision for you. It could, it could really be something that goes deep within you. Um, you could be really reaching into the emotional space now, Capricorn, um, within you. Um, it does look like this, this option would be a complete change. It would require endings to certain situations. It would require new beginnings. Um, but it would bring in this, this complete happiness with the Ten of Cups. Um, the King of Cups is here too. This is an energy of healing and energy of, um, love and, and nourishment and kindness and compassion in the environment around you. So this would be helping to bring in, um, um, healing and, and compassion and love and, and caring for people in the environment around you. This is taking action to fix things, taking action to bring in new energies that can, that can, um, add health and well-being to a community or to a family or to a workplace right and this would be something that you feel would really light up your heart would really be something that um you you have always dreamt of and always wished for and it could be something with this emotional energy here we have all cup energies it could be something that you've even wept about that you even cried about in your life that's something that even when when you think about it that you that you almost want to cry about it because it affects you so deeply so it's in a very emotional type of energy and i think when we're in this emotional type of energy capricorn it is a different kind of energy to be in and when we step into the emotional energy uh, we can sometimes feel like we're leaving the rationality, we're leaving the logic, we're leaving the groundedness behind. And it could be something that could be making you um, feel very nervous um, to surrender the logic, to surrender the groundedness. Like, is this practical to do this? Is this something that will help my life in the future? Will it add um, a stability to my life, right? Will it add pinnacles to my life? We do have the three of pentacles here and looking at work, looking at something that you're focused in on. This could even be a relationship, right? Because we are going into the energy of love, but I have to let the energies flow because um, I, I'm just going to say it again, Capricorn. I've said it in my readings that I do feel there's a shift in the energies. So 
Um, whereas before I said I would like to go into romantic love, um, the energies are somewhat different now. Everything is resorting itself out in the universe. So um, I'm just going to bring this keep flowing in this um, because this could be a relationship that we're talking about. Three of Pentacles could be a relationship. King of Swords could be looking at the big pictures of relationships for you and, and really could be even looking at different people that are around you. It doesn't have to be work. It doesn't have to be a hobby or it doesn't have to be revenue generating. It could be wrapped around a person or several different people. Um, whatever it is, you're looking at here two different options or three different options or however many options you have. There is an energy of a game plan, um, maybe a strategy change here. So whatever this is here with, with the death energy, it would require endings and new beginnings, which is difficult to do. It's emotional to do. It would be something where you would be having to be, your heart center would be affected by this. Um, it could hurt you as well when you go into endings. Then we have the Ten of Cups here, which is true happiness. It's bliss. It's contentedness. It's great relief. It's being together um, with yourself or being together with another person that just brings, um, a, a, there is no lack for anything. There is, the heart is full. There's nothing more than you desire, right? That, that you desire than this. This is the true, this is heaven, right? This is heaven on earth um, with the Ten of Cups. Then you have the King of Cups. This is bringing health and well-being and nourishment into the space around you, taking action to do that, getting into action to do what you need to do um, to bring in changes to the environment around you. And this could be your family. This could be a relationship. Um, this could even be another person here with the King of Cups. Um, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, a person here that's that's here that's a part of this as well, a partner or, or someone that is a, a love interest as well with the King of Cups. Um, when I, when I talk about the King of Cups, it's an energy of a taking action to bring in health and well-being. So this is somebody who does that. Okay. So if this is a person, this is someone who's generous, who's kind, who's compassionate, who's very emotional, thinks, thinks, would prefer to think from the heart than think from the mind. So it's very uh, emotional kind of thinker. Um, so, so that is the first option here and it could leave you feeling quite ungrounded and it could feel very risky for you to step into something like this, but it could be ultimately um, what you feel your heart is pulling you towards because again, it is a heart energy. These are emotional energies. So let's look at the other, um, the other side here and see what comes out for the other side. You have the lovers. So this is about some kind of partnership here. Eight of Swords. Five of Pentacles. So, you know, both sides here have um, good points and both sides have difficulties. And this is what you could be trying to figure out. You do have the lover's energy. Now, the lover's energy is a, an energy of two energies, two people or two different components in your life um, that are completely different, right? Two people that are completely different, two interests that are completely different, two workers in a company that are completely different. But because they're completely different, when they work together, whether they're in relationships or wh whether they're in a romantic relationship or whether they're in a work relationship or maybe they work out in the community, maybe there are two businesses that work together, right? So these energies can go over almost anything. They have a dynamic when they work together and they're in a good space that they can really produce. They can really make things happen. If this is a love relationship, this is a love relationship that can be intense and heated and together in a very cohesive way, right? If the lovers is in reverse, that's more of a toxic energy where these two very intense energies can then, if it's unhealthy, if, if there's a dynamic here that is unhealthy, whether it's something that you guys have created together or whether it's something that has come from the environment around you or has affected you in some way, this relationship could become unhealthy. So the lover's type of relationship needs to be maintained. It needs to be, it needs to be understood. Um, the word that's coming out um, is harnessed, right? It needs to be maintained. It needs to be understood how to keep both of these energies in a healthy place. And this requires um, the 
the mindset of allowing a certain amount of freedom, allowing a certain amount of understanding for the difference in these energies, that these energies are quite different. And it's only when we um, feed these energies, when we nourish these energies, whether these are two people or two communities or two um, even the the feminine and the masculine within us because usually it's a feminine energy and a masculine energy that we're dealing with uh, it's only when we really care for both of these energies give them the freedom to find nourishment in the way that brings them to a healthy place and when we mean nourishment we mean healthy nourishment healthy nourishment for you healthy nourishment for the other person if it's the yin and the yang within you it would be healthy nourishment for the yin and healthy nourishment for the yang so that uh, the the masculine energy is isn't running off and doing something that would actually damage the feminine energy and that the feminine energy isn't running off and doing something that would damage the masculine. But they're both doing something respectful of one another that allows for um, a, a recovery, that allows for revitalization, that allows for passion and enjoyment of life. Okay, because what we see here is this isn't happening right now. Something has happened here. It could be with the five of pentacles could be something that has, there could be financial difficulties. There could be one person isn't feeling cohesive with the other. Or maybe one person is feeling lonely or maybe there one person is um, missing the other one. Maybe one person or one energy is not even in the area. Maybe there are two people here that are living separately or two businesses that are from different parts of the world, right? So, there, there is this energy here with the five of pentacles where something big is missing. Something big is missing and it's affecting the, the reality of the situation. It could even be affecting how, how both of you feel together, right? And there is a sense here of like, how is this going to be fixed? How is this going to be fixed? What can we do to change the mindset? Because remember, the eight of swords is about how we think. It's about how we process this. How is our mindset keeping us trapped. And I, and I don't mean to lecture because sometimes the eight of swords is something in our reality that we have to figure out in the mind, right? Sometimes it's the truth. It's not always that we're in a negative energy. It's not always that we're in a negative thought pattern. It could be that we are seriously trapped in a situation and we need to figure out, um, we need to figure out with our thinking, put our thinking caps on and figure out how are we going to get ourselves out of this five of pentacles? Because somehow, whether it is in a negative mindset or whether there is a situation that is actually that you're actually in, um, it's going to take some thinking here with Eight of Swords, some strategy here, um, and, and maybe some balancing um, to get us into the Six of Pentacles, which is now balance and equality. So something is not equal here. Something is not equal because what happens when we move from the Five of Pentacles to the Six of Pentacles? New equality. So. It just depends on what these two energies are saying to each other. But if you have a situation here that's unbalanced here with two different energies that are quite intense with each other, quite beautiful when they're operating in a positive space, then there is someone here or there is an imbalance in this relationship and there it needs to be figured out. Whether there's an imbalance in money, an imbalance in equality, maybe one person is doing more work than the other or one person is thinking that they're doing one work... Whatever this is, there, you know, there, there needs to be, it, this is only going to be solved by both. It can't be solved by one. It needs to be solved by both. So if both energies are willing, and there is an energy here, a, a mindset of a willingness, a willingness to talk, a willingness to communicate. And what I mean that there, there has to be a removal of the ego. ego. So when you sit, I'm going to say now that these are two people. I know I'm spending some time on this, but I think this is important. When there are energies of two people, let me just take this now and say it's two people. It is good if they, that both of these people can come to the table with an energy of willingness, with an energy of being open about what the other person has to say, an energy of love, rather than an energy of defensiveness and, well, I did this and you did that and I didn't see, and maybe that's what it's going to take. Maybe just getting two people to the table is the best you can do and then have an all-out brawl at the table. Great. However you communicate. But please, no violence. No diminishment of the other person. Let's try to think of a win-win situation. But this, again, when you have win-win, there needs to be two willing people. So if I was to give any kind of advice, and I know that um, 
I don't know what the situation is, but I would say that if you have the lover's energy, that's something special. That's something special that you have. Not everyone has the lover's energy. Not everyone does. In fact, very few people have the lover's energy. It's something that's special. So if I was a parent and this was my child, or if this was my friend, or even if this was me, although sometimes when it's ourselves, it's hard to think through these things. I would really spend some time in this situation. Spend some time here. Have a conversation. Take the process. Find a mediator. Talk to someone else and get some advice from someone else. But eventually these two energies are going to have to come together and try to think through this situation and how to bring this into a six of pentacles. Because I think it's a six of pentacles here that's a problem, right? That we need to get to the six of pentacles, balance and equality. So... I would say if it was me, I would spend some time in this energy to make sure that you feel like you've done everything that you can to solve this. Because sometimes in, in the future, like when we move out, let's say we give this up and we move to this situation, right? And we, we gamble. We say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I've done everything I can. That's the word. I've done everything I can. If you can say that, with a resonance that's within you so that at, at the end of the day, you are in bed and you say, I am at peace. I have done everything I can. 10 years later, you can still say, you know what? I did everything I could in this situation. I did everything I could because what happens if you have the lover's energy and you don't do everything you can believe me, like when we have big things in our life like this, um, we can regret I have regrets in my life because I maybe didn't do everything that I could do. You know, we always say, maybe I could have done this or maybe I could have done that. And some of us, when we're in even abusive relationships, that feeling of guilt never leaves because it's it's a trauma that could be even turned into um, CPTSD or something like that. So some of us, um, if we are, are in abusive situations or violent situations, will always feel like maybe I should have done more deep down within us because that's a damaged part of us that we have to work really hard to heal. So I'm, I'm just saying like, if, if you have an abusive situation, if there's violence or if there is emotional abuse, you know that this, I'm not speaking to you. If this is emotional abuse or if this is something that has hurt you for many, many years and you will know within yourself, it is time to go. If this is a job or a relationship or whatever it is, you will know. Your heart will tell you, your soul will tell you. If you step foot in this door, there's going to be damage here. It's time to go. Something like that. But for the rest, when you're just trying to figure out a situation, um, it's good to put as much effort as you can so that you have peace if you're going to depart from the situation. So my you know, my, my advice, the guidance that's coming forward, um, is to spend some time in this side, see if this side, and I realize now you can't see it, but here, after all this time, I'm, I'm realizing that. So, you know, spend some time here make sure that you do what you can to really kind of change the situation and make this more equal, equal make this more equal, um, and balance it out. And then if you want to try this out, go for it, because it looks like it could really be something quite beautiful for you. It is going to be hard, though, because you do have the death energy here, but what you can attain could be quite beautiful. Um, now, this is still in the future with the Ten of Cups and the King of King of Cups. It's still in the future, and we always know, even though we can have tools, and even though we can have fortune tellers in our lives, and we can look into the future, that the future is a very complicated energy, and it is impacted by many different people, by outside influences. Who would have ever thought that a virus three or four months ago, or starting six months ago, or whenever it started in September, or whenever it started, would come in and really change our lives? right? Who would have ever decided that? Who would have ever thought that? And as many readings as we can do, we really can't tell the future because who's in charge of, the, of our of our world? Well, we all have a different idea of that, but um, I think we're all pretty um, agreeable that there is a greater force at work, right? And so we can sit as humans and do this and that, but there's a greater force at work. We really can't um, know everything in our lives. So whatever here is here in the future is unknown, but there is a um, definitely here a, no, uh, um, a, a knowing by you at this point that this could be something that could be quite blissful for you. 
So I would say spend a little energy here and see if you can figure this out because this is special with the lover's energy. And then after you do that, if it doesn't really work out, maybe think about moving to this one. That's my advice. All right, let's move into the, the next immediate future here and see what comes forward. Next immediate future, next immediate future, next immediate future. Okay, so these cards came in um, catty corner. They came in lateral. They came in turn, different directions. So this is a situation as you move into the next week or two in the next couple of weeks that is in flux. It is changing. So it's in action now. Things are happening. It looks like as you move into the next couple of weeks, you do make a decision. Um, some truth comes forward to you and you're able to see with more clarity about what to do. And I think once this answer comes to you and you decide and the truth is here, you really stay focused on that and you move forward in that direction. I think once you have made a decision, um, I think it's clear. I don't think you're going to be pulled one way or the other now. You're going to set forward. Um, that is a very Capricornian energy. Um, once you make a decision, you're moving forward and you don't really allow the other to sway you anymore um, because that's not really effective for you. It's not like, you know, once you have a two of wands, that's a fork in the road, right? And so if you choose a road, one road, and you, you can only be on one road at a time, I mean, unless you have... <sighs> I mean, unless you want to live a double, a, a, a double life or something, right? I mean, the fork in the road is you can't have your feet in both roads because the roads are going to split and, they're, and, the, and the paths are going to move, move away in different directions. So if you're practical and, you're, and, you, and you are logical and reasonable as Capricorn people are, you're going to know that once you choose a path, you're going down that path. Um, and I think that you're staying focused on that. You're, you're working hard at it. Um, you're making changes in your life. You're not getting distracted by other drama, not getting distracted by other things that you might have been distracted before in life. So there's something here that's really changed within you, Capricorn, in the next couple of weeks. Something really that's going to settle in, that's going to really change how you feel and how you work and what you focus on. You do have the death energy here. Now, this is an energy of change. Um, something is definitely coming to an end in this situation, whether you're staying in the same situation or whether you are moving to a different one, um, even when you're staying, right? Let's say you're staying in that five of pentacles and the eight of swords relationship, something has to come to an end in that too, in order for it to move to the six. So there is an ending here of something, a transformational energy here um, with the death energy. So when we say transformation, we, we talk about endings and then new beginnings and endings can be really painful. So in the next couple of weeks, you could be doing things here too, to end a, a way of acting, a way of being. It could be difficult conversations if you're staying in the five energy with the eight energy. The conversations that you have and the realizations that you accept within yourself could sting a little bit. Um, with the death energy, it means that no one, no one is exempt from feeling the pain of death, right? No one is exempt. Everyone will feel a sting. So if you're going into this situation and ending some things, you will also feel the sting of it. So will the other person, if, the, if these are two people, if this is two energies, or if you're quitting a job and starting a new job, there will be a sting here. It does, it does require um, some emotional um, pain when you go through the death energy, but then you have these new beginnings and the new beginnings can be fresh. The new beginnings can be cleansed. Um, they can feel good. Um, it can feel light. It can feel fresh in your life. So um, if someone truly passes away, um, 
that is a little bit of a different feeling. Um, and it depends on how people pass away. I mean, people who go to the other side, um, the, the, those are the whole full range of experiences here that I, I do feel this information is flowing out now that if you are experiencing a death in your life or a death in your family, um, it, sometimes death can be a relief. Sometimes it can be someone who has suffered and suffered and suffered, um, in their life. And as they pass over, it can be a relief now based on your belief system. Um, sometimes it's a child or sometimes it's a person who um, it leaves earlier than expected. And this can cause great pain and great turmoil for years and years and years. And if you are a parent and this happens to you, this can be with you until you die yourself, until you connect in with this person, whatever your belief it is around that. Um, so death energy can cause a feeling to stay with you for a very, very long time, um, depending on what the situation is. Um, for example, this is not about death as far as stopping breathing, but um, I've had jobs in my life where I really put everything to all my emotions and all of my energy into these jobs. And I still like the people there. After years and years and years, I still think of the people. I'm still friends with the people. I still miss the camaraderie that we found in those spaces. So the death energy can linger with this, um, depending on what the situation is. Endings are difficult, and I feel like um, the endings here is is a big message here, how to move through these en en endings. So I think you're beginning to move through this ending, ending of a behavior, ending of a way of thinking, ending of a um, uh, something that you're doing in a relationship, ending of a job, ending of a relationship, whatever it is, it's going to affect you. Um, and it's the effect of the ending um, that has to really come into fruition before the new beginning can really start. Um, and then you have the Empress here. The, the Empress is an energy of maternal love. Um, I, I think whatever this is, is helping you to really um, build into yourself again. Um, it's, it's helping you to find balance in your life. It's really bringing you to a more empowered place in the feminine energy, which is the Empress energy. This is an energy of compassion, of love, um, really understanding um, the mother energy. And the mother energy is an energy that um, gives to others. It's an energy that really um, when, when we think of a mother energy, the maternal energy, because the, the emperor is the paternal energy, right? It's the, it's the most powerful masculine energy in tarot. And the empress is the most feminine energy in tarot. And when we think of the empress, it is the mother, the maternal energy. Um, and it really cares and nourishes. Remember, the mother can discipline as well. The mother can be strong as well, but she does it in her own way. And we also, we also know that mothers are the strongest when they're healthy, when they're healthy and when they're vibrant and they can carry out their obligations and they can do what they need to do for the people and the environment around them. So um, this is, from my perspective, a, a feminine energy, whether you are a man or a woman, that's really gaining power, gaining empowerment, feeling the practical um, nature that you have um, Capricorn to set forward and do new things in your life and really get to work, but also understanding that you must also care for yourself, eat good food, go outside, feel the sun on your skin or whatever it is that you do that helps bring strength and vitality to you. And then also this, um, this knowledge that you must always, um, have this awareness for how your heart feels. How are your emotions? Um, do you feel well cared for? Are you caring for yourself? This is the, the, the cup energy. And then you have the sword energy, which is having clarity about what you're doing and having peace of mind about what you're doing. Um, and then you have this passion, the wands energy of, of having the strength and having the, um, the gumption, having the fuel within you that you can move out into new spaces and say what you need to say and do what you feel like you're, you're supposed to do in life. Um, so this is a very empowered person, but it, it, this energy moves forward in the energy of love and nourishment and kindness and compassion here with the Empress. Um, again, the Empress can be imp protective as well. So we all know the protectiveness, the protective nature of the maternal. So um, would she let anything harm these children? I bet you she wouldn't with her life. She wouldn't let anything harm these children. But would she let these children um, experience pain just so they can learn? Possibly, possibly. She would say, you know what? I'm going to let this, I'm going to let this young boy um, 
touch that wood stove. I'm going to let him touch it. So maybe when he touches that wood stove, he'll see that it's hot and maybe he won't touch it again. Right. So the maternal, it does have firmness. She does have a way of discipline, but it is different than the paternal. She does it in a different way, um, uh, maybe a softer way, but there can be, um, she understands that, let me stay with the wood stove. And somehow this is going to mean something. Um, let me stay with the wood stove. She understands that when the child gets close to the wood stove and he, if the child doesn't understand that it's hot and that could hurt him, um, she understands that he can get quite hurt. Um, he could put his whole hand on the wood stove. He could fall into the wood stove. It even makes me nervous to think about this story. And she understands that if he puts one finger and understands the pain that comes to him from that one finger being on the wood stove, maybe then he'll be much more cautious around. So she's willing to allow her children to step forward into some situations that will teach teaching situations, whether they cause pain or they cause financial pain or whatever. So what I'm getting from this Empress energy is very strong, forward thinking type of feminine is what I'm getting here. Um, so there's an empowerment that comes to you um, at, at the end of this period of time as you move into the future now. So if this is a relationship, I think that you're deciding what you're going to do in this relationship. You're changing some, some things. Once you decide, I think you're on that path and you're changing some things here that really help you feel much more stronger within your life and much more balanced within yourself. If this is a job, same thing. You, you decide, you move forward with it, you step into endings and you become much more stronger in your feminine energy. Um, and now remember what happens on the other side of the Empress is the Emperor. So, um, you will probably be focused in a while, maybe not yet, but you'll be focused to bring in routines and structure into this new change. But for right now, you're, you're focused on the internal, internal health. And then as the internal health becomes strong, then you'll probably switch over and balance out the Emperor energy, which is structure and discipline, um, and, um, processes and procedures and things like that. All right, my friends, that is the reading for Capricorn. I am going to move into the extended now. And in the extended, we're going to look at the people who are around you and try to dig deeper into those people um, and see what we can find with those people. And then we will take the situation situation out a couple of months, two or three months down the road and kind of see how it's going to pan out for you. All right, Capricorn, um, what a fun reading. I like that you're going through this transformation. I like that you're ending the reading with the Empress. Beautiful. Well done, my friends. Well done. All right. Thank you all very much. It's a pleasure to read for you, Capricorn. Stay well, stay healthy, stay strong, and I'll see you back out, out on YouTube in a, in a week or so. All right. Thank you.